no more. It cannot wait. I'm yours. Oh, but it's coming in you and me. I guess I won't be getting any sleep. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jamie. I'm guessing you know by the title what this video is about. But I just wanted to do this video because I thought it was a fun way for you guys to get to know me, my journey to getting signed, and just like, I don't know, have a little insight of my life. So yeah, let's get into the video and I hope you enjoy. After I heard like my sister sing, there was like, there was like roles in primary school, which is like elementary school in America that you could um, audition to be in the plays. And there was this one time where um, I'd never really sang in front of any of my friends and the school was, offering you could either go to audition for this thing i think it was maybe about seven you could audition for this play i think it was like joseph and the technicolor dreamcoat or you can go to math class and i was just like i don't want to go to math class i'm going to audition and i'm going to get this part um so when i sang for the teachers back back in my primary school days they just seemed to have like a really good reaction it was just like something that i didn't really expect i just sang and they were like, oh, whoa. I was like, oh. Like, little old me, I was like, am I famous? Like, do you like, what? Like, is this actually? It was like one of those things where I just fell in love with it and seeing people's reaction, even at seven years old, I just like, I was like, I'll never be able to not love this feeling. So play after play, I would just audition and I kept auditioning and I just loved the feeling that I got from being on stage. Just whether it was from my, my classmates or just going on stage and seeing the audience reaction. I mean, I was seven years old to like about 10, seven till 10, like where I used to just like be consistently in these plays throughout the school year. And I, it was just like the best thing. And it was like an escape for me. So after that, I really wanted to like audition to be in a theater school. So I begged my mom to like, let me join. She obviously signed me up without a doubt. And she was just like, my mom's always believed in me, by the way. She's like the most amazing human being that you could ever meet. Like, she's incredible and I love her so much. She's my best friend. And even though I'm on the other side of the world, like she's still back in my hometown. Um, we speak every day and she's like a blessing in disguise. And anybody who's lucky enough to meet her, like knows what I mean. So she signed me up for that. I was in that and then I started competing. I used to take dance really serious. So my mom would take me around, like literally around the world and I would dance in competitions, hip hop. No matter what, she was just always there for me. And then dancing was not enough for me. So I wanted to go into singing. And my mom would take me to every audition room, like every audition my mom would take me. And most of the time I got no, so I'm not gonna lie. Like it was like, come back next year or you're not good enough this year, but come back after you practice for a year and then we'll see where it goes. And no matter what, like she'd be out of the audition room and she'd be cheering me on and she'd be like, you got this, come on next time, pick yourself up, let's go. Um, yeah, like, and back then, like I was really defeated. It was like from the age of 10 to maybe the age of 17, 18, um, I never really got anywhere. Like it was just like, always like, come back next year. You're not really good enough this year, but if you go, if you come back and show us that you've worked hard enough, we might put you through to the next round. Just all these TV shows and so going to, high school now, it was kind of a different experience because all my friends are like football players and rugby players. So I was kind of like the outcast. I was kind of like, not scared to sing in front of them, but like, I just didn't want anybody to really like put the attention on me. So like, if I wanted to be involved in something musical in my high school, I would like literally go to choir class and I'd hide under the table so no one knew I was there. Which sucks to say now, because it's just one of those things that I don't know. It just it was second nature just to be like, no, I don't want to sing in front of you. Like I don't want you to know that I sing. Which is sad because like it's my favorite thing to do now and everybody knows that I just love music and like music is just me through and through. So yeah, that kind of sucked. Um having to like hide it from my friends, just like wanting to be able to sing. Um and then like obviously I was never really like the smartest kid in school, so growing up like whether it be like science, math. English, I was just never like the smart kid of the group. Like I was just, I just loved to sing and I loved to be creative. So anything like art or anything like that, that was me. Like you could sign me up and I'd be like there in an instant and I'd pass with flying colors. But when it came to like anything important, so to speak, I was never really good at it. Even throughout high school, like going back, I was just like, I'd post covers 
and then like I'd get bullied for it or like I'd be like not like bullied but like tormented in a way where people would be like oh that's girly or something like that so it was like I posted covers and then I like was so excited by the reaction of the cover that I posted and then this came along with it like it was it was like either or it was like always something that wasn't working out so I just kind of just kept myself to myself like I never really had the grades to go into like university and I never really had like good grades to like do anything that I thought was actually could be cool at doing so kind of screwed in a way I was like I don't know what to do don't know what to do so went to college maybe for like a month um, I studied art I studied design and technology in movie I guess and then I had to retake math and math was not a oh money. When I tell you I'm so bad at math, like I was so bad at math. So it was just like one of those things where I was just like, this is not gonna, not, not gonna work. So I ended up um, dropping out. Yes, I'm a college dropout. Um, but it was just like, it wasn't for me. Like, and I feel like no matter what, like if you wanna go to like college or, um, succeed in anything you else want to go to like to college for like that's amazing but it just wasn't for me so i ended up going into a call center job that my sister worked at she got me the job and i was basically the guy on the end of the phone being like tech support jamie speaking how can i help and if you had a problem with your ipad i think iphone um this thing called a huddle it was just like anything you had a problem with that was technology i was the guy helping you out on the phone and I was there for about a year and a half. And I remember vividly, one day I was on the floor on my own. Like there was no one there. I didn't think any managers were there. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna sing. And then unfortunately for my luck, well, not unfortunately, cause it helped me out in the long run, but I left my intercom on. So like I was on break and I just started singing. I was like, da, 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 da. like whatever. And um, my manager came up to me and was like, she, like my manager would walk through the door and I'd be like, oh, like, they look like they're coming, they're coming my way. So like, he'd walk over like from from the other side of the room. It was like one of those like, my heart was pumping. I was like, oh, I think I'm gonna get fired. I, I've done something wrong. And then he came up to me and he got close and he was like, what are you doing here? And I was like, what do you mean? He said, what are you doing in a place like this, with a voice like that? And in my head, I was like, huh? He was like you left your intercom on. And in my head, I'm like, oh, what? I'm like, oh my gosh. I just left the intercom on and everybody heard me sing. He was like, you need to leave this place and like go and chase your dreams. And like, he was like, is music what you want to do? And I was like, yeah. He was like, so why aren't you chasing your dreams? I was just like, because I'm from a place where there's not really much opportunity. I, I like, it's like, you're from where I'm from and you don't really leave where you're from. One of those kind of hometowns. And I love my hometown, love the people in my hometown, but it's just one of those places where it's not like really amazing place for for a good opportunity to want to be able to do music for a living. So after like all my knockbacks, like from being younger, like going to TV shows and trying to get exposure that way and getting those, I um, thought, like he said, that I should audition for something called The Voice. And I took up on myself to apply. I told my mom that I was going to apply. And she was like, mate, this is gonna be amazing. This is gonna change your life. And I was, I was so iffy on it. I was just like, mm, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's gonna change my life, but I'm gonna just try one more thing to see if I can chase my dreams that way. So I applied, like sent my application in. I got a call back because I had to send a video in of me singing. And then I met with um, like there's a producer around um, before before the actual coaches and stuff. So I went and then I passed that and I was like, oh, I said maybe this is like something that I can actually like not succeed in, but I was like, maybe I got a chance at this. Like I was 17 at the time. I was so excited. I just wanted to, I just wanted to sing. Like I didn't want to answer calls and fix people's iPads anymore. I was just like so over that, you know, so. That was that, and then I auditioned, and I actually made it onto like the the TV side of things, where like Jennifer Hudson, Gavin Rossdale, Tom Jones, and Will I Am was a coach, and then I ended up getting through, and I was on Jennifer Hudson's team, and then throughout the competition, I came actually third on the show, which was like mind-boggling to me, from going from this like normal life, like growing up, 
like wanting to sing and just wanting to be on stage to actually being able to like be on stage and like get the affirmation that I was good enough from like the people that I've always looked up to. Like Jennifer is one of my closest friends like now and she'll, she's, she always looks after me. But growing up, like, like I adored her, like she was one of my idols. So like to be in her presence and just like, I don't know, just work with her was like mind blowing to me. So I came third on the show and so mind boggled that I was even able to come third and then came off the show. And I guess when you come off a show like The Voice or like any TV show, it's really hard to establish yourself in the industry, I guess. So for me, nothing really happened for a month. I had like a few managers meet me back and forth and like I was meeting with people that were like really cool managers and I was so excited to like just be in that presence of everyone. And then I had a call from a guy called Walker and this is my manager now. Walker is from New Orleans in a place called Louisiana in the US. And Walker like said that from the get go, he was such a fan of my voice and he spoke to my parents. He was like, Jamie's a star and all this like amazing stuff that you that you really want to hear. So Walker said to my mom and dad, um, what do you guys think if I flew Jamie out to uh, America and met with him? Um, and in my head, I was like, there's no way that I'm going to America. My mom and dad were like, whoa, this is like a huge thing. Like this doesn't, my, like I just grew up in a normal family. So my mom and my mom's a cleaner and my dad's a taxi driver. And I don't know, it just, I, things like that didn't happen to people like me. So anyway, I decided I really wanted to go. I, it was the first time flying on a plane alone. Um, my mum and dad obviously did their background checks and made sure everything was safe and in place, but ended up going to New Orleans, Louisiana. I ended up meeting Walker and his family. And I don't know, it was just like one of those things where it just felt like family from the get go. You know, I just felt so at home um, with them and it was just like the best, best feeling. So I, I, I went over for two weeks, um, sang like, or just sang in the house every day and Walker really believed in me and we were trying to figure out a way where we could work together in some way, but it was difficult for me at the time because I was living in Wales and Walker was in Louisiana. We just didn't know how to make it work. So um, I flew back to the UK after two weeks had passed. One video that Walker recorded of me in his house in New Orleans ended up being posted by Khloe Kardashian. I think it was like 6 a.m. in the morning, my mum came in my room, she was like, Jamie, Jamie. Like, all like, really, my mum's Scottish. She was like, Jamie, Jamie, Khloe Kardashian's posted about you. And I was like, what? She was like, Khloe Kardashian's posted about you. And I'm like, what? Like, 6 a.m., I'm like, what? She's looking like at your Instagram. And I looked at my Instagram, and my Instagram was going boo 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 Like my phone was blowing up. Like it was crazy. And I was like trying to get to the, I was like it was 6 a.m. I was like, just woke up. Just trying to get to the post. And she posted about me. And it was, she was like, I could listen to your talent for days. Like you're one of my new favorite singers or something like that. And in my head, I'm, I'm freaking out. My phone's blowing up. My, my texts, my texts are going crazy. And I'm just like, what is happening and then maybe like two days after i had all these like record deals um and record labels getting in contact and in my head i'm thinking this just doesn't happen it just doesn't like this doesn't happen to people like me like what is going on um maybe two days later i was on a flight to nashville um i ended up signing a management deal with walker we figured that out we were like Woo! like a funny i just Walker was like family to me and he still is. He's my manager now. He's been my manager for like three, three years now. He's amazing. He's one of the funniest dudes you'll ever meet in your life. He's freaking incredible. I ended up flying to Nashville, started working on my own music and in my management deal. Khloe Kardashian literally changed up my life in terms of that way. Like she got me on, on like so much exposure from that in front of the right people. And then um, I was in Nashville for two weeks and then Atlanta Records called um, Walker, they wanted to meet me. So I was in Nashville and then I flew to New York and met Atlantic Records. And then Craig Kalman, um, I had a meeting with Craig Kalman, who's the CEO of Atlantic and went in and I sang for the whole office. They really wanted like to hear me sing live and just like see who I was as, a, as an artist. Cause all, like, all they really knew from me was like cover videos and 
like what I did on the TV show when I was like 17. So sang for them and it, it was just like the most like whirlwind. I was looking around at people that I, that I had looked up to growing up and I was just like, how am I singing in front of you now? Like I'm, I, I am so shocked that I didn't break down crying. Like there and then because I was just like this does I, I just so I just wish my mom was here <laughs> because it was just so so crazy ended up getting everybody on their feet clapping and I was just like wow this is crazy and then I was in New York for like maybe a week and then I signed a record deal with Atlantic Records which was the best moment of my life like when I tell you like that was like such a dream come true it's crazy like I went from all this covers. Like actually being able to be like, I'm signing my name on that piece of paper. Like I'm writing down Jamie Miller on the signed line and I'm like, I'm finally able to be my own artist. Like I don't have to worry about what people think anymore. Like I don't have to like, I was like told myself I wasn't good enough because I wasn't smart in like these grades and like I wasn't smart. And but, like, I just was like, I just want to be Jamie. Like I just want to be Jamie and I want to be heard as Jamie. And I just want to, I just want to do music. So after that, like I signed with Atlanta Records and then I moved to London to like start working on my records. Like start working on my singles, my like my EP. And I was like, it was like one of those things that I was like, I'm finally able to do what I want to do. And people believe and respect in it. Like they actually think I'm going to be someone. So anyway, I was in London for maybe about like seven months and working on my own music, like hardcore, just working, working, working in the studio. And then maybe like the first month of going in London, I found City That Never Sleeps, which is now my debut single. This is it here, this is the single cover. <laughs> Recorded City That Never Sleeps, maybe like the first month being signed with Atlantic two years ago. And then just kept working on music. I ended up writing and a bunch of songs in London and all these amazing places. And then Atlantic were like, we want to move you to Los Angeles. Like we feel like an American team and um, American base is like where we want you to work out from. So I was so scared. I made this life for myself in London, getting really comfortable. And then I was like, <sighs> snatched from my hands because I was like, I need to move to Los Angeles all of a sudden, which growing up, like I was like this, again, this doesn't happen to people like me. Um, so I ended up moving to LA and then ever since that was like two years ago, working on my music like every single day and like just being able to like go into the studio and be able to wake up every day saying that this is my job. I was, it's, it, it, to, to this day, it's mind blowing to me. It's like so crazy. Like I've made so many amazing friends and I finally got music out with Atlanta Records, City That Never Sleep. I'm finally able to say that this is my face on this cover. Like, I don't have to do that anymore to like prove myself that I'm, like I just, I want, I want, I want people to sing my songs. Like I want, I just work so hard for people to like believe in me that way, you know? And um, I don't know, it's really cool. And I just wanted to like, thank you guys for believing in me too, because like the support you've given me over the last few years has been absolutely, mind-blowing and absolutely incredible and i'm just blown away and i really hope you enjoy and say the never sleeps it just came out and the response to it has been absolutely incredible so i do want to thank you so much and i hope i haven't bored you with this video i just thought like i've had so many people say like how, how did you do this and how did you do that and it's so different for everybody not everybody has the same path so i just wanted to say if you have a dream and you like want to chase it chase it believe in yourself and just do whatever you gotta do together you know my mom and dad and my family believed in me from the get-go so if you have a dream honestly i know this sounds really cliche but go out there and chase it because you never know what's around the corner and you never know who's watching you but um i just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video and like just loving me the way you guys do I'm still getting used to it all, but it's incredible. And I just wanted to say thank you. And I hope you stay supporting me and everything else because I'm just loving what I'm doing. And I can't wait for you guys to hear the rest of my music because I just love it. I love doing it. And um, yeah, I just wanted to thank you and hopefully see you in the next video.